Hello again, everyone. Welcome to Washington Gun Law TV. I am Washington Gun Law President William Kirk. Thanks for joining us. Hey, for those of you who've been geeking out here for a while now, you know that we've spent a lot of time talking about the ATF's new rule as it relates to firearms with attached stabilizing braces. And we even did a video uh, series, or at least started to do a video series called Ask the FFL. And in a video that we did about Form 4473, we made some material misrepresentations. And fortunately, a lot of you called us on it alerted to us right away and we have since pulled that video down we will correct the record and get a better video up there for you but because of that little snafu i felt it very very important to clear the record and give all of you a very clear clear and concise understanding of the rule of law as it relates to this important topic so today we're going to spend a few minutes and talk about the huge difference between converting a pistol to a rifle versus a rifle to a pistol Okay, so the issue we're talking about was kind of brought about by this video that we did about Form 4473, where what we were doing is we were talking about what happens on Form 4473 in Sections A and C when we purchase firearms. And what we learned through that video, which is no longer up, but you'll have to take my word for this, is that in Section A, an FFL is given the choice to list the firearm that you are purchasing as either a handgun, a rifle, or an other. They also have the same choice in Section C, where they can list the firearm as either a handgun or a pistol, a rifle, or an other. Now, we can accumulate firearms, really, in the AR platform and the types of platforms that we might have firearms uh, with attached stabilizing braces, one of two primary ways. We can purchase a completed AR pistol, that is a completed AR pistol, completely configured, fully functional, everything such as one like this. And when that is registered on Form 4473 in both Section A and Section C, it will be listed as a pistol. Now, interestingly, if we bought ourselves a fully configured, fully functional AR-15 rifle, such as one like right here, that too would go on Form 4473, Section A right here as a rifle, and it would also go on Section C right here as a rifle as well. So when we buy firearms in their completed format, they will be listed under that completed format. The other way that we can accumulate AR pistols lawfully is we can buy receivers, 4473s, fill them out, but they would be recorded in Section A and Section C as others, we could then configure them either into rifles or pistol platforms. Okay, so with that understanding, we know that ATF is on this rampage where they're going to be taking a look at all these AR pistols, and they're going to be trying to determine whether or not they are really AR pistols or, in fact, NFA-regulated short barrel rifles. And they're going to do that through a form called 4999. And we've done a bunch of videos about what a huge trap I think this whole pistol brace amnesty registration is, how I think they're going to set the trap, and we can go on and on. But the issue for today is this, is if you have an AR pistol or anything in an AR format, what can you and can you not do to that as far as reconfiguring the firearm before you end up in trouble with the law. Okay, so the first scenario is this. You have a pistol and you want to convert it to a rifle. How can that be done and can that be done legally? So the answer to that question is yes, you may. And there is no major legal requirements. There is an order of operation I think you should be aware of. So if we have this AR pistol here, we're going to take that 10 and a half inch barrel on. Go ahead and put a 16 inch barrel on. Now we actually have a rifle. Now it's not the most fully functional rifle because we still have this stabilizing brace on the back. So if after the, and this is important, after the new upper has been installed and we have a 16 inch barrel on there, we could then remove the pistol brace, add a rifle stock to it, and that is a totally legal reconfiguration of the firearm. And since that firearm originally was registered either as an other or a pistol, can you convert it back to pistol format? Yes, you can. ATF's specific language on this states, assuming that the firearm was originally a pistol, the resulting firearm with an attached shoulder stock is not an NFA item if it has a barrel of 16 inches or more in length. Pursuant to ATF ruling 2011-4, such rifle may later be unassembled and again configured as a pistol. 
Such configuration would not be considered a weapon made from a rifle as defined by 26 U.S.C. Section 5845. Okay, and that's really important because if we have a weapon which was made from a rifle, that appears to be a problem, which is our good segue for doing it the other way around. What happens if we want to convert a rifle to a pistol? Can we do that? No, we cannot. So this is important. If we're going from pistol to rifle, that's okay. But if we're going from rifle to pistol, that is not okay. ATF's exact rule on this states, a firearm that was originally a rifle would be classified as a, quote, weapon made from a rifle if it has either a barrel less than 16 inches in length or an overall length of less than 26 inches. If an individual wishes to make an NFA firearm, they must first submit ATF Form 1, pay a $200 making tax, and receive approval of the application from ATF before converting the firearm. So let's make that perfectly clear. If we are going to take an AR rifle and convert it to a pistol, that is, we're going to drop a barrel on it that's going to be less than 16 inches. At that point, if we still have the rifle stock, we already have an SBR, okay? And that's a big problem. But even if we were then to take the stock off, add a brace to it, we have still now manufactured a firearm made from a rifle, and we cannot do that without approval on ATF Form 1. So the bottom line is this, and please let's make sure we're really clear on this. If we are converting a pistol to a rifle, we can do that. However, if we are converting a rifle to a pistol, there is all sorts of federal loopholes that one must jump through to ensure that we do so lawfully. If we fail to do so, we risk criminal prosecution. Listen, you may have more questions about reconfiguring your firearms or anything else related to your Second Amendment rights. And if you do, remember, you can always contact us at WashingtonGunLaw.com. Or, of course, you can call us directly at 425-765-0487. Now, let's remember... Part of being a lawful and responsible gun owner, like we talk about all the time here at Washington Gun Law, is to know what the law is in every situation and how it applies to you in any instance that you may find yourself. Until next time, thanks for watching. Stay safe.